Guys, it is finally here. It is time for the NFL 2024-2025 season. I know I'm a little late on these, but today I have my predictions, record predictions for every single team. We're going to go division by division, top to bottom each time. The season starts on Thursday. So I'm assuming nothing is going to happen before Thursday if this is this is being recorded on Tuesday nothing should happen now let's get into the predictions so first we're going to start off with the AFC North and starting at the top the winner of the AFC North I have the Baltimore Ravens the Ravens are coming off a 13 and 4 season last year where they lost in the AFC Championship to the Chiefs. I expect them to be just as good this season. They lost some guys on the offensive line. They did address that portion in the draft and that's going to be the biggest concern for me, but having a quarterback that is mobile like Lamar Jackson and an absolute freak of nature in a running back with Derrick Henry, I think that is going to be some good way to combat a struggling offensive line. On the defense, they'll be solid again, especially with Nate Wiggins coming along in the draft. To replace Fuller, the front seven will still be good. They did lose Patrick Queen, though. But looking on their schedule, they've got some tough games. Acknowledging that they play, let me see here. The Chiefs, the Bills, the Eagles, the Texans, and if you want to include the Cowboys, you can. That one's kind of iffy for me. But in every game, I still think that they're going to have a fighting chance, and I'm going to have them at the same record that they had last year at 13-4. and four. Moving on to the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals, they still managed to find themselves at 10-7 and seven last year without Joe Burrow for seven of those games jake browning did good in place of joe burrow but now oc and brian callahan leaving to tennessee you have jamar chase holding out but i've kind of see the jamar chase situation similar in a way to the joe burrow situation they drafted a rookie wide receiver they still have probably the best wide receiver two in the league in t higgins so these are Games that they can win without Chase, but you're not going to replace Jamar Chase. He's a top five, top 10 receiver in the league. It's kind of hard for me to word it, but if you can have players that can still produce, it's not going to be the end of the world to have Jamar Chase out. Maybe Jamar Chase will be gone for a few games. But despite that, I think a Bengals squad led by Joe Burrow is still going to be competitive. That is if Joe Burrow is going to be healthy all year. The defense has solid pieces as well. So I am expecting a winning season for Cincinnati. I have them at 10 and 7. Moving on to the Cleveland Browns. The Browns did overachieve last season going 11 and 6. Joe Flacco breathed life into an offense when he stepped in for Deshaun Watson. However, I think that the Deshaun Watson-led offense will struggle as it did last season when he was the starter. There was a lot of inconsistency with Deshaun. His numbers weren't great. Last year, he threw seven touchdowns, four interceptions in six games, and he had a 61% completion percentage. The defense carried them. They were elite last year. I think they were the best defense in the league last year, if not top three, top five. And it kept them in a lot of games when they were dealing with their quarterback carousel. They had Deshaun Watson, Joe Flacco, DTR, and PJ Walker. Four quarterbacks starting all throughout last year and still winning 11 games. Kevin Stefanski, coach of the year. Fantastic coach found a way to win games. They had some great wins like their one against San Francisco, for example. But unfortunately, if Deshaun Watson is the quarterback all year, 
I just don't think that the Browns can deal with so much inconsistency on the offensive side of the ball, but they still, they're still going to be a good team, but they won't replicate their success from last season. So I have them going nine and eight. And to round out the AFC North, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. In all his time in Pittsburgh, Mike Tomlin has never had a losing record. They've dealt with some quarterback issues in the last few years, and that's not going to change this year. Having an aging Russ and, and, and a Justin Fields that has not lived up to his hype or expectation with his high overall pick. It's going to be an interesting storyline this year, not only because of the two quarterbacks that they have, but Arthur Smith coming in to replace, kind of replace Matt Canada. I know he got fired last year, but Arthur Smith ignoring his time in Atlanta should be able to put together an offense that will work more fluidly than a Matt Canada offense because that is a low bar to hit. But we know the story of the Steelers. Their defense is going to keep them in games that they probably shouldn't be in. And they're probably going to win games that they shouldn't even think about winning. They had a crazy divisional record. I think they only lost one divisional game last year. And that was with a division that did not have a losing record in its entirety of all last year. Their offense... While I think it's going to be better, I do still think it's going to be a headache. I wanted to give them a losing record really bad. I flirted with it. I had them down there at like 7 and 10, 8 and 9. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it because what is 17 years of winning to ignore? And I'm not going to ignore it. I think it would be naive of me to ignore that. So until I see anything different, I have the Steelers finishing at 9 and 8. So now we're going to move to the AFC East and starting off with the Miami Dolphins. You might be surprised to see the Dolphins winning the division this year because they're, they've been pretty interesting under Mike McDaniel. Sometimes they look like an unstoppable force and that's usually at the beginning of the season. But when the end of the season comes around and December football starts, November and December football, they just struggle. And I think it's going to be a rinse and repeat this year. High level offense, talent and speed all over the place. And their defense has a ton of veteran pieces that they brought in in the offseason. And it is going to help out a squad that did struggle last year. Like I said, I see a, same, a similar finish to last season. Reinforced by the fact that they closed the season to play the Texans, Browns, 49ers, and Jets in their last four games. I still see them succeeding, and I see them finishing at 10-7. and seven. Next up, we have the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are entering a year with lower expectations than normal. They went 11-6 last season, and they're missing some key pieces from that team. Diggs is now with the Texans but he did have a rough ending to end the year stats speak for it but i also know because he was on my fantasy team and that was not fun to experience matt milano tore his bicep and could miss a lot of time once again however i do like the offseason moves that they made they brought in keon coleman from the draft and adding some more depth at the receiver position a Sean McDermott defense should keep them into games. I don't think that their defense is going to be horrible. And having a physical specimen that is Josh Allen at the quarterback position will also keep them competitive in probably every single game. They may have a slight regression, especially with the tough schedule that they face out of the division, but I do have them finishing at 10 and 7. Next are the New York Jets. And they are one ingredient away from being a competitive and potential playoff team, and that is quarterback play. They had a top-of-the-line defense, and they were held back by performances from Zach Wilson that would probably make Aaron Rodgers want to sneak a little bit of ayahuasca onto the sideline. And my prediction is purely based off of 
Aaron Rodgers. But unfortunately, the best ability is availability. He tore his Achilles in what, four snaps last year? And that was a team that everybody was excited about. And then it just gone like that. So Aaron Rodgers' performance will remain to be seen. He is not a young quarterback by any means. However, if Rodgers is to play throughout or most of the season, and they have him around end of the year playoff race time, I think that he'll help lead this team to success that they haven't seen since Ryan Fitzpatrick. I have them finishing at 10 and 7. And to round it out, we have the New England Patriots. It may seem a bit harsh, but aside from Drake May, there is not a lot on this New England team that I am particularly excited about. They're going into the season without a coach named Bill Belichick for the first time in over 20 years. The team's success is riding a lot on a young talent that isn't starting off the season, but that's not a bad thing. This is some a problem that a lot of teams face when they're going through a rebuild. I have no idea how Jared Mayo is going to do in his first season as a head coach either. But when I look at this Patriots team, I have no real clue what their potential could end up being. So I'm going to give them, maybe a little harsh, a 3-14 and 14 record. Moving out to the AFC West, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are the Chiefs. They may have a couple moments of struggle. And we'll think this might be a down year and some different Super Bowl or playoff implications. But Mahomes and Andy Reid will figure out a way to make it work. I don't care if their receivers are getting arrested or go out there with nubs for hands. They're still going to find a way to get this offense to score. Their defense is a matchup that you're not thrilled about. They're going to keep them in games as well. There might be a couple more windows of opportunity opening with the absence of Legarius Sneed. But I don't expect much to change, though, and I have the Chiefs finishing at 11-6. and six. But please, spare us from excessive Taylor Swift camera shots in every single game. Please. Next, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. And I am fully aboard this Antonio Pierce hype train. Maybe there's not enough people on board to consider it a hype train, but I am excited for what this season holds under a full slate of Antonio Pierce coached games. Patrick Graham heard that Josh McDaniels got fired and he came out of his hiding place that happened to be firmly located straight up his ass. And after that, the defense was on fire. I expect the defense to keep them in a lot of their games this season, but the biggest concern I have is the quarterback room. O'Connell struggled last season. They won a game where I think O'Connell didn't even complete a pass in the in all of the second half. And that was against the Chiefs. And while Minshew helped lead the Colts to a winning record in 2023, he was far from perfect. So the Raiders will be involved in a lot of low scoring affairs, I think and they'll find themselves around the middle of the pack this year, finishing with an 8-9 and nine record. Next, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. They are entering a new era of Chargers football under Jim Harbaugh. A coach that should revive this dumpster fire that Brandon Staley left behind because this is a coach that really has not lost anywhere that he's been. With that, I don't expect immediate success, Justin Herbert has been dealing with some injuries during the offseason. I think he's back at practice now. Should be ready for week one. But speaking of injuries, Harbaugh brought over the backfield from Baltimore with Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. A, a tandem that has historically dealt with a lot of injuries. And J.K. Dobbins in particular because Gus Edwards played a lot 
if not all of last year. I think that their defense is going to succeed under a coordinator that is not Brandon Staley. So that should be an upgrade right away. Hopefully Harbaugh and his staff can create something similar to what he had in Michigan. Again, this is NFL football. This isn't college, but everything has to start somewhere. I will see improvement. It won't be significant unless you count three games as significant because I do have the Chargers finishing at eight and nine. And to close out the AFC West, I have the Denver Broncos. The Broncos got the quarterback of the future. The greatest quarterback to step into Denver since Peyton Manning. Next Broncos legend, Bo Nix. I don't want to put on the jersey every time I talk about him, but just a little reminder. But now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the Broncos. If Sean Payton can muster up an offense out of this team, they can compete. Solid receiving options, a good running back when healthy, and a brand new quarterback that gives them a fresh start. The defense won't be great, but there were some additions that can push them in the right direction, and they still have one of the best corners in the game. I have them taking a step back record-wise, but I do believe they'll have something to be excited about when looking ahead to the next few seasons. But for now, all I have for them is to finish with a 6-11 record. And for the last division in the AFC, the AFC South, we have the Houston Texans. The Texans straight up shat all over my predictions last season. CJ Stroud went berserk last year. Nico Collins and Tank Dell were a problem for every opposing defense. And Coach D'Amico Ryans finished second in Coach of the Year voting by a tiebreaker. So they overachieved for sure, but I'm fully behind them this year. They made more additions to the defense with Daniil Hunter and Aziz Alshair, who will be reuniting with D'Amico Ryans. There were some notable acquisitions on offense as well with Joe Mixon and Stefan Diggs. I could see those two regressing career-wise, but adding those two, even with a step back from elite status, can still be huge when you add them to an already electric offense. I expect them to be a top contender in the AFC, despite them being in a division where every other team also improved. And they do have a pretty rough schedule outside of their division. They're taking on the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Bills, and the Dolphins in the AFC. And in the NFC, they've got contenders like the Lions and the Packers. And even some teams that could be on the bubble for playoff contention. A little bit of a spoiler. But maybe the Cowboys and maybe the Bears. A tough season schedule-wise ahead of them but there is a lot to be excited about in Houston. Talent on both sides of the ball, beautiful uniforms. This is an exciting year in Houston. I have them finishing at 12 and five. The Colts are another team who did better than I expected last season in a way that was also kind of shocking. A majority of the season was, was led by Gardner Minshew and they still managed a winning record. That's not to knock Gardner Minshew at all. He's a luxury backup in this league, and he even got a starting job in Vegas, like I mentioned. But a performance that was led by your backup going into the season because you you drafted a quarterback in the top five. You would typically expect that player in Anthony Richardson to be the focal point of news barring injuries, but unfortunately, that was the case. Hopefully this year we can see a full season out of AR. If not, the departure of Minshew isn't the end of the world because you got another luxury backup that we saw succeed last year in Joe Flacco. He did good enough to win comeback player of the year honors. So it's not a slouch at the backup quarterback position. He's somehow an ageless wonder. But they've got studs surrounding whoever the quarterback may be. You've got a freshly extended Michael Pittman. You've got Alec Pierce and a rookie and a Donnie Mitchell. Jonathan Taylor and Trey Sermon are rounding out the backfield after Zach Moss left to Cincinnati. 
in free agency. And the defense also saw some more contracts extensions with DeForest Buckner, Zaire Franklin, and Kenny Moore. It's not limited to just them, but those are three of the biggest names on that side of the ball. So with those offseason additions, I don't think they're going to be too hampered by anybody who did leave in this same offseason. I see them being a solid team that could be a dark horse potential team to make playoffs. I have the Colts finishing at 9-8. and eight. Next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now that we've covered the teams that outperformed my expectations, let's look at a team that let me down last year, the Jags. I put so much hype into their offense, and while it wasn't bad, it was inconsistent and not to the level that I expected. I'm going to pull back on my expectations this time around. They lost Calvin Ridley, who I was basically going to war for last year. But they did draft Brian Thomas, and they added Gabe Davis to add to the receiving core that still does lack a true wide receiver one. On defense, they added some veterans all around, but most notably Eric Armstead along to add to Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker on that front defensive line. Maybe the inconsistency from last season left a sour taste in my mouth, but I'm not expecting too much from them this year. I have them finishing at seven and 10. And to finish out the AFC, we have the Tennessee Titans. Here's a team that I really want to be hyped about. They made all kinds of moves in the offseason. They brought in Legereus Sneed and Chidobi Awujie to help out a secondary that desperately needed it. On offense, they got Calvin Ridley and Tyler Boyd to pair alongside DeAndre Hopkins. They grabbed Tony Pollard to put alongside Tajay Spears in a duo that should be pretty decent. All of this to help out second year quarterback Mayo Boy himself, Will the Hammer Levis. First year head coach Brian Callahan should help out this team, but I'm not sure that the record's going to show it. They've got some tough matchups on their schedule, but I do think they have the potential to surprise some people. Due to that schedule, though, I have the Titans finishing at 6 and 11. So. As I was editing this video, I decided that it's kind of long. So I'm going to do two parts to this. First is going to be the AFC. Second is going to be the NFC. So if you're watching this, I'm either editing the NFC one or it's already out. So go ahead and check that out and you'll see the other half of the league's record predictions. And that's about it. So until the next one where we will be seeing either NFC predictions or record predictions. See you later.